Welcome everyone to a quick look video here from Game Reactor. I am Maunus, this is Dory, and Dory's been taking a look at the Steam machines. And I think because of the mystery that surrounds this weird partnership between Valve and some hardware manufacturers to create these living room oriented PC console hybrids, let's start out with the obvious question. What is a Steam machine, Dory? Well, uh, back in 2013, Valve announced that they were going to be taking over the living room. Uh, they're making their own OS operating system, and they're going to be making Steam machines in partnership with some uh, hardware developers. But a Steam machine is basically a PC that runs Steam OS. So you can go out and you can make your own PC uh, with hardware specs that are supported by Steam OS, boot up Steam OS and put it in your living room. But that will maybe be like a tower that's noisy and yeah. that doesn't look nice next to your uh, glorious PS4. So, uh, some hardware manufacturers are making more sleek and uh, compact, console-ish yeah. looking yeah. PCs yeah. that run the Steam OS. And we have one of them here today that I have been reviewing. Yeah. Uh, the Alienware uh, Steam Machine. There's and several versions of this, right? Yes, th yes. There, are, there are several different hardware specs. They all look the same. They all have the same GPU. Yeah. And then they have different CPUs, uh, har RAM. Har hard drive, and RAM. Yeah. And just we have to start with the design of this because yeah. this looks, it looks amazing. It looks amazing. And also, like, a huge middle finger to something like the Xbox One, which is uh, three times the size and cools from the top and the sides and the back. Yeah, and and this, actually this has better specs than the Xbox One, at least on paper. I just wanted to compare this. And only this. cools from the back. A little bit, if you can put it back on that camera. Look, look, yeah. Look at this. Yeah. And it's really sleek. Like, it's, it doesn't get, get away with, like, f like, designers, like, living room designers saying, oh, the consoles are always black boxes. This is a black box still, but it's smaller. It's more sleek. It has the matte finish on top. So I don't think it's, like, an eyesore or anything. I actually think it's much better than the, your standard console Yeah, I, I think this looks better next to your TV than the yeah. PS4 or the Xbox oh, One. Very, especially the Xbox One, yep. uh, which is, like, huge and box-like. But, you know, yes, uh, the, f the first thing is that this is aimed as we said before, this is living room aimed. Yes. That is why that you don't want to build your huge tower. That is why that you want this small, sleek piece of hardware next to your TV. So, let's get on with the actual stuff that's inside the box. Yes. So, this is the most specced out uh, and expensive version of the Alienware Steam Machine. Yes. It has an uh, i7-4785T processor, which is quad-core, uh, 8 megabyte case, so it's up to 3.2 gigahertz. That's pretty, that's pretty nifty. Yes, it has a 2 gigabyte uh, GDR5. Uh, on, the, on the GPU itself, yeah? Yeah, yeah the GPU, yeah. which it's spe specifically made yeah, that's the little cheating thing. <laughs> Specifically made GTX card, but what it comes down to is specs out at about the same as an 860 GTM. M. Yeah, yeah, it's an M. So what you would get in a laptop and not a tower gaming uh, PC yeah. like home home. Yeah, PC, it also so. has a terabyte <laughs> hard drive and uh, comes with the uh, Steam controller, which we'll touch yes. upon a little bit. In a, but here's. The problem, the Steam machines were delayed a year. Yes. Because Steam pulled everything back. They wanted to work on the controller. They wanted to work on yeah. SteamOS, which I think is a great, all, all, great thing all the time. Because always, always. Because I think the SteamOS is still in its infancy and needs more work. Yeah. And I think what they've done with the controller is great. So yeah. all the time spent on that, worth it. Very much so, yes. But that also means that the hardware in this hasn't changed, and it's now a year old. Oh, right. They released this already as the Alienware Alpha. Oh, right, I remember you, that, Where yeah. you could get it with a 360 controller and Windows. Yeah. Uh, and that's been out a year already. Yeah. This is the same machine inside. Now it has the SteamOS and comes with the yeah. Steam controller. But it's always going to be the problem with stuff that is a PC. I know this is living room and console uh, oriented. However, it's always going to be the problem with PC is that you're racing against time. Yes. And also, let's touch upon this real quickly, because the GPU is... Uh, welded into the motherboard, yes. so, so it's not removable. Uh, on the website they say that this is fully customizable, just like a PC, yeah. which up to a point is true, because you can, true. you can open it up, you can switch out the hard drive. CPU. I uh, will show a little video here where you can actually open up the machine yeah. 
uh, pull out the two fans, wonderfully designed, and how they crammed everything yeah. in here is just amazing. Yeah. But you can take that off, you can switch out the processor, you can switch, uh, put in more RAM, less RAM, very much wherever so, you yes. like. But when it comes to the, uh, the graphical processor, yeah. you're kind of shit out of luck, which means yeah. that you know, s a couple of years down the line. You're gonna have to buy a new one. Yeah, because this doesn't, this is a PC. It doesn't age like a, a console. console right? Because no. with a console, you have very locked down specs and you have uh, the content providers that are making the games, that yeah. are making their games to run on these specific specs. And you don't yeah. have that with PC. No. Especially when you're running Linux, which is uh, another thing we, that we come down to that is running on the SteamOS, which is Linux based. Yeah. Which is new. I mean, the, the Steam OS. Yes. So, uh, I, I don't remember how many games are on Steam, uh, like, in total, but no. it's, it's, I think it's around, let's say, 15,000 or so. I mean, yeah. So, a small uh, portion of those yeah, are optimized. And, and for when that you stuff. go to Linux, it's 1,500 plus. Yeah. And uh, with uh, native Steam, uh, Steam controller compatibility, that number bumps down to around 600. Yeah, so your your sort of the availability of the games uh, on the platform really narrows down when you want every single like positive thing about the Steam Steam machine to work. Like yeah, full controller support and uh, OS. Yeah. So I I think that that that's a, then you're shit out of, shit out of luck. But I mean. These are these are software hiccups, and that's something that will be fixed. As you said, it's in this in its infancy. For me, what's more detrimental to the actual box is that you want your PC to be customizable and uh, adaptable to the game you're playing. That's the whole point. So not being able to change the GPU, then right now what the benchmark tests we've done with several like AAA titles that have come out like in the recent like m years and months. Yeah, I was, it run I runs I was running. Perfect. Yeah. I was running Bioshock Infinite. I was running uh, Metro Last Light Redux. Redux I was running yeah. uh, Spec Ops the Line. Dying which is a bit Light. Older. I was playing Dying Light. Uh, <coughs> I was prettier than a, 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 than your than your console version. Yeah, and it was running. Far. It was running everything at 1080p, uh, 60 frames per second steady or yeah. upwards of that. Yes, and at medium yeah. settings. Pretty much across the board. Yeah, so uh, it does it does outmatch the console that it's trying to outmatch. So in that sense, it is successful to the point. However, in two years' time, we don't know. But right, right now, we are we are reviewing the value proposition that yeah. this console sort of presents. Now, I mentioned the word value proposition, Dory. That's because I want you to get to a very 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 specific stat about this box, which is the price. Yes. Actually, what I want to do before that, I also want to talk just a little bit more about the Steam OS, yeah, sure. which is uh, sure. a huge part of, because that's what you're going to be interacting with with this yeah. box. And I've actually booted it up here. So to reiterate, a person at home with his tower PC, regular PC with a Windows license and everything, can also inst install Steam OS yes. and yes. run it just like we have here. There's yeah. this is not exclusive to the Steam machines. It's just an OS that's yeah. free. And so. it's 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 completely open and you can actually set it up here in, on the Steam machine so that you boot to the desktop. Yeah. And that's going to allow for a lot of not only because of course Valve is uh, and the, the Valve platform is known for game mods. Yeah. With the the Steam works it's easy to make mods for the games, but here is going to be Steam OS mods yeah, that people yeah, yeah, are going to yeah, be yeah. able to install. Specifically optimized and created for this platform. Yeah. So, but here, if you if we cut to the uh, the Steam yeah, let's OS. cut to the Steam OS. And one like immediately, we we are also appealing like to visuals here. And you showed me early pictures of what the Steam OS looked like in yep. its earlier <laughs> infancy. Yeah, when, 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 when it was when it was uh, the Steam uh, big picture Steam mode. Steam picture mode looked really beautiful. This is a bit of an eyesore, if I am. Totally honest. It's something to do with the, like the blue colors and the shades. Um, yeah. I think I think switching between stuff is fine. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. This, this works fine. When it comes down to the store, I think the filters are not. It's it's kind of hard to find exactly what you want. Of course, you can just press X and search. Of and, course. And this keyboard is really cool. Is amazing because I'm using the dual track pads as fingers. I, I can type as fast as on this as I can on a keyboard with two fingers. Basically. Yeah. 
But uh, so it makes it makes a lot of sense, and uh, a lot of people were really ma uh, angry about uh, like replacing the Daisy Wheel with it. The Daisy Wheel is still available, but yeah. I think this is really, really, really cool. Yeah. Uh, now the problem is here, of course, that you have the wish list, you have uh, for you, for where, you, where you have the, the queue yes. that they uh, uh, introduced a couple months ago. Recently updated, recently updated games, top sellers, popular new release releases, and features. But how, how do you navigate to the sales? Uh, because a lot of people are uh, taking advantage of Steam exactly. sales when they're there. Exactly. And where is just all games? Oh yeah, that's true. I d Here I you can I go yeah. into yeah. show all show available, available content. content. So which which means. This is uh, when, when I go and, and I click this. First, I thought, okay, here I can just see all games that are. Oh right, yeah. But what this means is that it's you can buy games now that I can only play on Windows, so oh, you don't right. really want to yeah, sell yeah, them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then again, we should reiterate as well. We're looking at the software right now, software that will constantly evolve. Oh, absolutely. Despite the fact that you may find and limitations and the in the hardware, this will keep. Like uh, yeah, becoming they, something they, else, they, and they will they've switch updated this at least four times so just while I had yeah. the machine under review. And then review. again, as we as we know with software like the Blades for the original Xbox 360, software evolves based on what people tell the manufacturers and the developers. Yeah. So this needs to get in the hands of people before they can know. All oh, right, this main menu here is a bit cumbersome. We'll change it around. So you yeah. can expect so here, Val to here, do that. Here, when we cut into the library, yeah, uh, we, we come into the problem that I mentioned earlier. Here we can see I have uh, 611 games on my in my Steam yes, library. Yes. What I need to do is put on a filter and set it to only Steam, Steam OS, OS games, games, which you bumps it down to, to 246. 246. Let's uh, do controller support as well. Oh yeah. Uh, like with native control, like with with controller supported. Let's see the number now. And this is controller supported. Yeah, I, yeah I'm yeah. not sure that it's the Steam controller. Steam control. This is Xbox 360 controller support be as well. Be because booting up a game that has controller support will recognize the Steam controller instantly as an X input controller. Yeah. And you can just use it right yeah, out yeah, of the yeah. gate. And but it's standardized, so it's fine. What I want to show you is uh, one of the things that I love about the Steam controller. Uh, let's just boot up Bioshock Infinite. Yeah, let's example. go. Yeah, the best game of that year. Mm -hmm. According to some? According to the people whose opinions matter. Yeah. So while it boots up, I'm going to uh, press the, uh, the Steam The Steam button on button the middle, which go you may recognize as an equivalent of an Xbox button on the Xbox One controller yeah. or a PS4 button. And I'm going to go into Configure Controller. Oh, yes, I love this. Here yes. I can change all the buttons. Uh, you have fully adaptable uh, and can change and the back buttons. Here, I can actually set the gyroscope and accelerometer yeah. to do something. It can help you aim, for example, in shooters. Yeah. Now, people that look at this and like, oh, that's a lot of options. That's kind of daunting. True. Yeah. Then I press X. I can go into recommended. So this is what is recommended for this game. A lot of games have their own specific templates. Yeah. This is just the recommended gamepad with camera controls. Yeah. Uh, right out of the gate, it plays as an Xbox yeah. 360 controller. Yes, but you can you can choose some templates for it. Yes. Yes. So d n now we're going to down into community, and there we have this is the most used one. So somebody that has made Bioshock Infinite specific bindings, and so also ba like arranged uh, according to how many users are actually yeah, using it. So 391 is using uh, Nikush bindings, which are made specifically for the game. Yeah. Um, and, so and then we have templates, which is just normal templates. Yeah, what but I these are really re these are really cool as well because, as you said, it might be very daunting to go in and download other community members' uh, control schemes. So, yeah. but these are like three that is in basically installed for every game that has controller support, which is gamepad, gamepad with high precision camera aiming for shooters, for example, and keyboard, wast, and mouse. So you're always, you're never spoiled for choice. Yeah. I think you always have these three to go back to yeah, if yeah. you think you've and, run and, out. And what I tend to do is I, I select one of these, whatever fits the, bo the best, usually like gamepad with high precision camera aim when it's a PC game that supports yeah. a controller and you use a mouse at the same time for right. the camera. Then you choose this one and then you can actually change some stuff. And what I also tend to do is uh, go into the gyroscope, just a little, set that as a mouse. Right, yes, Set yes, yes. Set that to the, uh, for example, the left uh, grip. So now, when I press the left grip on the controller, you can yeah, switch to my camera here. I press the left grip, yeah, and then I, I use the gyro to fine-tune my aiming. So I go into iron sights, yeah. I press the paddle, and then I can you know slightly move slightly it. Slightly move it, yeah. That's pretty cool, yeah. Because it can be a bit daunting to <coughs> get you know very yeah. very precise, but it is th the pads are one one, 
Oh yeah. Precision. Yeah. They're yeah. they're super super accurate. Yeah. And you can there are so many. L let's just if we just jump into the pad here. Oh, sorry. But look, it's in it's insane. Yeah, you how have all the friction this vertical scale. Yeah, I don't even know. And then you go into advanced settings and then you have yeah. smoothing and uh, edge spin radius, which which basically so some of this means that you can because when you put your hand on the controller, your thumb is coming in to the trackpad at a at a specific angle. Yeah. It can be like this or it can be like this. So you can set the the vertical edge. Oh right, yeah, yeah. You know, so so if you move your thumb directly to the sides, you need to set the angle on the pad where that Yeah. It, it, it's a deep rabbit hole of customization yes. to go down to, and, and it, I love it. If you are like a like a really elite PC player, and what you value most is the uh, customization and the adaptable nature of the platform you're playing on, I think that this completely mirrors the stuff that you might expect to have from a controller that it, you, has to utilize the mouse and keyboard setup. Yeah. Everything is completely adaptable, and everything is only as deep as you want it to be. For something like you, the entire customizable control scheme is really cool. For someone like me, it's cool to have the three standardized templates to use from, e like based on the game that I'm that I'm playing. Yeah. So I think it, it works really well there. Yeah. And cool. Um, so Dory, I need we need to get back. To yeah. This. Let, let's talk How about much quick, quickly about performance first, uh, because it is Linux based. Uh, I think some of the games aren't quite optimized for Linux. No. Yet. A lot of big games don't come out on Linux right out of the gate. It's true. So... A lot of weight is on the developer's shoulders. Yeah. Because they have to... It's not Valve doing this, it's the... It, but as, you know, the Steam controllers are very... Are it, like, this Steam OS is in its infancy, as you said. So, I'm guessing that a lot of indie developers and a lot of big developers as well swear to Valve as a way to distribute their game to, like, hardcore, yeah, like, the like hardcore audience. So, don't... I don't think you need to worry that your the games that you're looking forward to won't make it to Steam OS. I'm pretty sure that every one of them is going yeah. to. So and I mean, uh, yeah, there are so many indies, of course. But yes. do you want to spend all this money to get a, an, an indie box? Not really. So you are thinking about the big AAA titles. Of course, yes. They are also coming on uh, on uh, on Linux. Uh, they uh, they are. Like like you have Borderlands the PC sequel. You have Borderlands two, and all of these games they run smoothly yes. with a little tinkering. On around medium, you get 1080p, 60 frames per second. It looks like if, okay. If you want to compare it to PC, yeah, and and like my PC or, yeah. or a high grade yeah. customizable PC, this is a medium. Grade. This would be medium, but that's still better than the PS4 and Xbox One. Exactly. When you compare it to consoles, this blows them out of the water in, yeah. in a lot of aspects. Yes, there is, however, one aspect where it the. It also blows them out of the water, but in the more negative yes. front. This right now is uh, around seven hundred and fifty dollars. Yes, that's just over seven thousand uh, something Danish. So, yeah, but there, there's a lot, there's a lot of extra stuff there because stuff here costs more. But still, seven hundred and fifty dollars um, compared to the three hundred dollars you would pay for a PS4 and the two hundred and eighty, two hundred and seventy dollars you'd pay for an Xbox One. Yeah. So there you can buy both consoles plus a sizable amount of games and, and accessories for the cost of this. But yeah. now, now th uh, again, this is the most high spec one. Yes, you can get you can get and smaller ones, and, and you can get the like with an i5. Then you save two hundred dollars. Yeah, w uh, an i5 with the same RAM. Uh, you can go down to i3 with the same RAM, and you can go down to uh, it's also an i3 with uh, half the RAM uh, and a five hundred gigabyte hard disk. But they all have the same graphic GPU. Yes. GPU. So from your like technical standpoint. If we were to go in and buy an Alienware Steam Machine with the lowest specs, like the ones that are more price point friendly to uh, what you would expect a console to, to cost, mm. how do you think that would perform? Like i3, no, first two, of all, I, four I, I, gigs of RAM. First of all, I wouldn't. I would buy the, uh, the second most expensive yeah, one. Which, which on the only difference is, is an i5 processor of the same series yeah. instead of an i7. Yeah. Yes. So that you would you would expect that to perform like pretty like okay similar with slightly yeah. slight like minor drawbacks, but then again it's down to five hundred and fifty dollars, which makes it much more competitive, uh, I think, to a console market. Yeah. So it makes sense in that regard, but we, we 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 can't say yet. We have the most expensive one here, and from what I saw, and this is with console eyes, I thought it performed 
really nicely yeah. in the games that we saw, like games like Dying Light, for example, which on PS4 actually is a bit choppy yeah. sometimes. And then this was really the, smooth. The, the main question <laughs> is, can you put this next to your TV and sit on the couch and play anything on your Steam library, any genre? And that's where the Steam controller comes in, and the answer is basically yes. Yes. So and it, it might which not be... Is kind of made. It yeah. takes a while to get used to. Yeah. The, the first time you have it in your hands, it feels so weird. Yeah. And getting used to the track pads, etc., and then going into the settings and find what works best for you. But it can play almost any genre. Yeah. The and that's that's amazing. The, the problem, of course, is uh, the UI in some games is made for smaller yeah. screens. So you will, you know, you'll, you'll have to squint your eyes when you're you're writing something in on the virtual keyboard and naming your character and stuff like that. But in terms of playing. The thing it is, it works. The thing is, like you need you need to judge it like based on what it sets out to do. And while it may not be for the price that they are asking, it may not be the Steam machine that you wanted. It does accomplish the goal that it sets out to do, which it is: we take a PC that's sleek and well designed into your living room, where we present you with an OS that works and a controller that provides the variation throughout a, a number of genres that works. Previously, up to this point, yeah. something you could only do with a mouse and keyboard. So and in that yeah. sense, and it really works. quickly before we we finish here, there was one thing that I forgot when we're talking about the uh, the cutting in half or more of your game library. Yeah. Uh, of course, if you plug this into a network, yeah, with the LAN cable that's on the same network as your gaming PC, yeah, your two Steams will talk together and you can stream yeah, from okay, your PC. Yeah. And it is 1080p, it is 60 frames, and it's magic to me how well it works. If you have a five good enough network. Five megabyte uh, download, I think that was at least what I heard was the minimum. Yeah. But most people now have 18, 20 megabyte download at least. In, in yeah, and, 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 and it's, it's within your own home network. Within your own home, home network, yes. So and, and so, so you just got to have a router that can, can use it. I, I tried it out, uh, it's kind of magic. So with that, you can run all of your Steam library through this. But then again, if you have a powerful PC, you get the Steam link. Yeah. And also, one, one thing that this is, this is going to be like a, a little sour final note. But then again, this is $750. You could potentially, what we're sitting here and recommending is sort of the ecosystem that the Steam machine sort of offers to you. Yep. We're not actually recommending this machine. Because what you could do is take your own tower, install Steam OS on it, have the brilliant Steam controller, and maybe move it somewhere where you can't see it in your uh, because right now this has a lockdown GPU which you cannot change. And while it looks very nice and very sleek, it is a large value proposition for something you could build. You could build a, build a pretty cool gaming PC yeah. for that amount of money and buy the Steam controller and have a have a better time. With m with the sort of the ability to change it your be, GPO, be more future proof. But then again, be more future proof. It wouldn't yes. look this sleek and small. Yeah, my main my main gripes with it is that uh, I I can't see, I cannot see why you wouldn't do it the other way. Yeah. Why you would limit yourself to a welded in GPU? Now we must also also quickly sort of iterate here that while this GPU is locked in. There are a lot of Steam machines out there, and we don't know yet which one of them have completely interchangeable no, no. problems. Th because th this, is is the, this is the, the smallest, most sleek, most best looking one. Yes. You have bigger towers, you have, I like, mean, and, they and come also in all shapes and sizes. And, and WebHallen, I remember specifically, has something that's more akin to the Xbox One, but that has completely interchangeable parts as well. So this is we we are recommending i think the notion the idea of having this mm. it's a good idea so if you're thinking of putting uh, like putting your pc more into the living room space take a look at the steam machines find some specs that perhaps suit you maybe yeah. something with interchangeable parts but i think like as a whole it has proven that while a mysterious concept at first it seems like that this could really really be like a, a game changer in terms of how PC and the living room environment talk to each other for in, from a gaming yeah, perspective. Quite possibly. It's all based on, going to be based on community feedback yes. and support and yeah. support from the game makers themselves. And so it's Valve. Yeah. So they, they will listen, usually. Yeah. And they usually make stuff that is pretty well rounded and pretty well thought out. So yeah, as but, it, but it's also, you know, the third party game maker. 
okay. it's on their shoulders as well because yeah. they need to optimize their game to run on SteamOS. But as I think more and more users will sort of dabble over in the SteamOS side of things, um, and as that happens, more and more op optimization will be needed from the developers, and they will, of course, heed the words of their fans and do it. But we right now, yes, remember the Blades from Xbox 360. An OS, a good OS, takes time, and it takes community feedback, and that's what they're getting right now. So yeah. expect SteamOS to change a lot over the course of the w months and years ahead. But from now, a very good, very ambitious idea that I think works really well in terms of how little time we have got to spend with it. Yeah. So thank you for your time. Thank you for your time. <laughs>